that music. Party's not a party's a man who fights crime And we're gonna watch him fight for a minute at a time With John and Will and I guess you just rhyme It's Bad Minute! Hello everyone and welcome once again to Bat Minute and Robin This is the podcast where we shed some repurposed sunlight on each minute of Batman and Robin, one minute at a time. I am one of the hosts, Niall McGowan. And I am your other host, John Parker. And I sure haven't lost yet. I might have lost it, but I haven't lost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, today we're joined here uh, from uh, some uh, podcasters at a time. They've got some <laughs> secrets ready to ooze out of them. <laughs> uh, coming from out of the shadows, it is uh, Rachel Gatlin and Adam Sheehan from TMNT. Hello. Hello, hello. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Can you please yeah. ooze in the bathroom, not on the carpets? Of course. Of I've, course. I have got all my ooze out before we started recording. We're yeah. good. Oh, good. Yeah, we're good. It's, it's, so, it's a word I never usually get to use in a positive context, ooze. <laughs> ooze. It always has some, some, something disgusting attached yeah, to it. both yeah. a noun like, and a verb yeah yeah oh yeah. yeah that's a good point yeah usually you hear ooze it's like well it's an oozing cyst yeah or, it's, or it's like usually seep that's a yeah, it's, seep. it's never it's yeah. usually never positive even though you can say someone's oozing with confidence it still sounds a little icky yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that that makes me think that they're they're too confident. They're one yeah. of those people that they're so confident they're cocky. You don't like yeah. it'll it'll get on you if you get too close. Yeah. 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 Ew. Ooh. What a nice <laughs> way to start, Niall. <laughs> but um today here, yeah, we're here to talk about uh, minute one hundred and ten, uh, which uh, opens with a chilling countdown uh, and it ends a minute later with some blasting. Uh for for you know, better or worse, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is an yeah. interesting one. I this, this here in this minute, right? Right, Bat- Batman asks the scientists if they're okay, <laughs> and their response doesn't fill me with much hope. Really, like they no. don't sound okay. Because they think we're like, oh, you're gonna be there for the next twenty minutes. So uh, <laughs> yeah, just he, he hang just on. leaves them. <laughs> You just be like, no, for the love of God, get us off the goddamn telescope. That's I remember what he does. He's like asking if they're okay, so then they go, yeah. So he's like, oh, oh, cool, cool. Uh, you stay there then. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna go and do this other thing. Just keep. I remember on. being at a theme park, and the ride got stuck. Oh no! So That's we were kind nightmare. of like laying backwards, and the the ride tech was like, "You guys okay? <laughs> I mean, I'm alive. <laughs> like, yeah, I'd I'd rather not be here. But, yeah, can you, know. you can you put me on the ground, please? <laughs> it's one of those questions you feel like you have to ask it, even though you also feel like an idiot for doing yeah so it's like, <laughs> it's like okay, i know you're not okay but uh this is they'll be over as fast as we possibly can get it. yeah uh, <laughs> not, not to go into too much detail but i i kind of had a terrible uh week at work and my manager the other day was like how you doing i'm like okay i guess Gen- gestures wildly <laughs> around like, like what am i supposed to say <laughs> well no i used to do that i used to be the same i mean it's the english way <laughs> to be uh, insanely yeah, underplay everything and be too polite. But these days, I just, I'm honest. When people are like, oh, how's, how's the day going? I'm like, uh, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, absolutely awful. I well, wish you hadn't asked. Well, I'm yeah. here. Mm. <laughs> I'm well, here, someone aren't said that I? to me um, at work. They, they asked me to do a particular task that other people don't like doing, but I don't mind. And um, uh, so I was just like, well, you know, I don't mind doing it. And plus, I'm stuck here anyway. Yeah. So, you know, I'm here for the next six hours. It doesn't really make a difference to me. <laughs> so can we talk about this keyboard that Batman is using? Ooh. Oh, what what country is this keyboard from where the, the space bar is up at the top and the top row of keys is UWCA? Yeah, we've been trying to figure this out. Right. Do you have any suggestions? Because we cannot. What is it? I know not every country uses the QWERTY keyboard. No, but there are all kind that... of variations on it. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a keyboard where the, the, the space bar was up at the top. No. Mm. 
Like, and I know some devices have like a bespoke, you know, input system, but this is just weird. Yeah, this could be like, oh, this keyboard's from the Congo. Like, <laughs> does it even have the correct number of keys? Yeah, I, I just think the prop master had never seen a keyboard before. <laughs> <laughs> this is like getting to the late nineties. Come on, what's he doing? It kind of feels like maybe they were worried, like uh, maybe Cordy is like copyrighted so we can't have that we have to make it as the exact opposite you, of you know what that I, is. I wouldn't put it past someone to think that's true for this movie <laughs> like they're, they're putting the keyboard together oh we can't we can't use qwerty like apple owns that right mm. <laughs> i i don't know if there's a full shot of the keyboard but what if there's like a, a, a secret message like please help <laughs> making props against will yeah. <laughs> this Send movie food. is terrible Pray for Mojo. Pray for Mojo. <laughs> Pray for Clooney. <laughs> yeah, it could be like that's what if you look at what he's typing, it is just help. <laughs> help me. Or maybe help my career. Maybe at one time this was a full keyboard, but like whatever this apparatus is, the full keyboard didn't fit. So they had yeah. to cut it, cut it down and shave it off and it's probably something know. like that, isn't but it? Those in the like, because um, they did say like the the toy manufacturers and stuff had to work on this movie designing props because they had to get the toy line into production as soon as possible to meet the deadline, and they didn't even have an art department hired, so oh. they were literally just sitting around waiting for designs that they could make toys of. And then wow. they ended up going like, "Oh, I'll design your snow globe for you, or whatever." It wouldn't be surprised if they're just like. It just got so late in the day. It's like, do we have a keyboard? We didn't hire someone to design a keyboard. It's from just some like together a keyboard. Like, what is it? Yeah. It's like, or it's, I, I can make one. Or it's from some children's toy. Like yeah. accuracy doesn't matter because they can't read anyway. So like, yeah, yeah, just put it on there. Yeah, one of the art department was like to their kid, "Hey, you make the keyboard, all right?" And then just handed <laughs> this thing. I was like, I think we can slap that on. I'll be fine. Totally. Batman, you know him abandoning the scientist here. I do kind of get it. I mean, it's nice because it's the first in, like first instance he's had since he's shown up that he actually even knows that they're there. <laughs> well, the he knows. Time, he's he just, just like, hasn't acknowledged them. <laughs> yeah, he's been asking, "Are you okay?" Like, just like I, I have, I have acknowledged that you're, you know, over there <laughs> clinging on for dear life. Just in case you thought I was swinging around this telescope <laughs> randomly earlier without considering you at all. Plus, yeah, like I, I get what he's doing. He's made sure they're fine, but you know, he has to stop. He has to do his absurd satellite plan to save the entire city. Mm. So it sounds awful, but it's like the trolley uh, problem that you get. You know that. that yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> he can sac- possibly sacrifice these two people to save thousands, millions, even. I don't know how big's got them in this movie. Yeah. Although at the same time, because we I remember Kiri did last week all the the maths of like how hot the, these beams would have to be in order to thaw. <laughs> The city and how that would basically scorch everybody in, in the city alive. Because, but then them at the end of the telescope, as the beams shooting out, they'd be probably like the metal would just heat up instantly, <laughs> yeah. and they would just be like scalded and they just let go, fall to their deaths anyway. It might be bad. I was like, I don't know. This would have been like, I I need a partner. I've got two partners, and neither of them are here. Yeah, <laughs> like, I also think it's funny that this satellite is branded U.S. Army. <laughs> Yeah, and like yeah. the government has not done anything to stop this. Like if you hack a government satellite, you're not gonna they're they're gonna find you pretty quickly. I think. <laughs> and that could be they're operating under '60s Batman rules of just like you know Batman will take care of it. Don't worry. <laughs> someone someone is working at NASA and they're like, oh, someone has hacked the satellite, and then the supervisor comes over. Oh, that's just Batman. Someone with what appears to be a Wayne board has hacked one of our satellites. That's fine. <laughs> let let him do it. He he pays us get... enough money. It's fine. <laughs> I just get the image of like Neil Hamilton's Commissioner Gordon and Chief O'Hara just been like, "Oh, I hope our Cape Crusaders can stop those yeah. wretched beasts." And, like, and don't do something yourselves, you assholes. Don't lean up to these guys. And in this world, I'd imagine like the government has multiple contracts with Wayne Enterprises. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Unless Bruce is just signed in under his yeah, he's, he's got a back door into everything. Bruce at BruceWayne.com. Yeah. <laughs> the password is pearls. Yeah. Martha. <laughs> oh my god, yes, yes, yes. This Mr. Freeze like, that's my password. Why did you say that? That's name? my mother's name too. 
<laughs> oh no! Every comic book character's mother should be Martha. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> but uh, speaking of, though, actually, of the sixties Batman show, there um, we haven't really got into where this whole concept of Mister Freeze having a giant freeze ray. Oh, that I wondered actually... where that sentence was going. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing is. I'll say it probably definitely is influenced by this episode, but at the same time, you're doing Mr. Freeze and you want him to do be the biggest threat. The most obvious thing for him to do is to have a giant freeze ray. Mm. Um, but weirdly enough, it didn't... Well, the thing is, in the comics, he only appeared like uh, once or twice as Mr. Zero before he was adopted to the 60s TV show. And he didn't have a, they didn't do anything with a giant ice cannon at, at that point either. But the uh, 1960s television show... Uh, was the first to introduce this concept of Mr. Freeze having a giant cannon that he was going to use to freeze mm. Gotham, then the world. Uh, it's actually in the season two finale, uh, which is I Spy slash The Duo Defy. Uh, and it's uh, my favorite Mr. Freeze, Eli Wallach. Um, nice. Because people, uh, Eli Wallach is one of my favorite actors ever. Uh, absolutely adore that man. And people are all into the auto premature Mr. Freeze with his bald head and his ginger eyebrows yeah. and he's just <laughs> constantly saying, Wild, it's wild. And I hate I hate that version of Mr. Freeze. Uh, he's so annoying because he keeps trying to make wild happen. He keeps constantly saying, Oh, it's wild, it's wild. It's like, Stop saying it. Stop trying to make wild happen. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah, Eli Wallach comes in and because George Sanders, Mr. Freeze, who was the first one, he was like his, you know. Uh, smoke ja- smoking jacket wearing slicked hair back just looked like George Sanders sounded like Shere Khan because that's who did the voice and like he's just a very cool kind of character but Eli Wall comes in kind of crazy Beetlejuice-esque hair but it's all frozen and he's just like hey I'm just going crazy right uh, and so he comes in uh, this is the episode we talked about briefly before because it has Glacia Glaze who was the influence for Misbehaven uh, way back earlier in the movie uh, and his scheme this episode is that he's going to kidnap uh, Alicia Cook Jr., not Alicia Cuthbert from 24, uh, uh, Alicia Cook Jr. from, you've seen him in tons of stuff. He was in, like, the 12 Angry Men and Stanley Kubrick's The Killing. He's in Blackula. Uh, you, one of those guys, if you saw his face, you're like, oh, yeah, I have seen that guy. He's in loads of, like, classic Hollywood movies. Uh, he kidnaps him in order to uh, steal his... Uh, formula for a instant ice ray, uh, and you know, eventually, over the two parts, uh, he does so. Uh, but he's, you know, Mister Freeze then decides to hold Gotham to ransom, uh, and he sends his uh, pet seal, uh, Isilda, uh, to <laughs> deliver this news to Gordon. Uh, so Gordon and O'Hara are sitting there, and a seal shows up, and it's got a note from Mister Freeze, <laughs> and then they just have to like keep the seal. So they're like Batman's like, where's the seal now? It's like, oh, it's in a nice, it's in a bathtub uh, down <laughs> down the hall. <sighs> um, and then a whole bunch of other random stuff happens. One notable thing as well is that Mister Freeze keeps trying to freeze Batman and Robin, but they have their super thermal bat skivvies on, <laughs> uh, which is the same exact idea as these suits that Batman and Robin and Batgirl are wearing at the end. They cut the scene of Mister Freeze trying to freeze Batman, and he holds up his cape, and he's like, I've you know thermal charged my suit or whatever. Same exact idea. It's just like thermal bat skivvies. We've got a suit now that you can't freeze, even though uh. that's stupid. Uh, and um, at the end, Batman's bright idea is like, well, this is a homing seal. So we just let the seal go. He'll lead us to Mr. Freeze. And at this point, Mr. Freeze has got a, a hideout inside a giant iceberg amongst several giant icebergs mm-hmm. in Gotham Harbor. And he's created an ice ray that he's going to use to freeze the world and stuff. Uh, and yeah, just at the end, uh, Batman obviously stops him. Uh, that episode, though, very notable, is that because uh, it's the season two finale, it's got the last bat climb. You know, him going up the side of the building and a celebrity mm. popping their head out. Love that. Uh, and some guy called the Carpet King, <laughs> who I guess was like an English carpet salesman or something. That's that. I was going to say it sounds like somebody like a a local celebrity. Or he thinks he's a local celebrity. You know, mm. like. Uh, He's got a big business in town. <laughs> yeah, pretty sure it would have been like people would know him from like the commercials or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but it's also got the last, um, you know, uh, next time. Well, the Cape Crusaders, like because in season three, 
it's all one-parter episodes. They don't do two-parters anymore. So that episode, the Ice Spy, is the last ever utterance of, you know, can the Cape Crusaders be... Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, and it's also, for interesting for our purposes, and I actually put this up uh, in the listeners group during the week there, um, we talked about the creation of Barbara Gordon as a thing of corporate synergy mm. between DC Comics and the TV show because they created the character together and it was like, we're going to introduce her in the comics and then put her into the TV show and it'll drum up hype. Uh, and it worked very, very well. Uh, but Barbara Gordon debuts in season three, episode one. But she's actually mentioned in the season two finale. There's a little clip of Gordon talking to Chief O'Hara and then he picks up the phone. And he's like, oh, tell my daughter Barbara to take a later plane. I've got some cool facts to, to face before I can go see her and stuff. And I was just like, oh, so Barbara was actually mentioned earlier than we thought as well. She was mentioned like a month after she debuted in the comics on the TV show. And then they geared up to like, Yvonne Craig as Batgirl kind of thing. So for for completionist's sake, there that is as well. Um, But but yeah, so I would imagine that's where the influence for this particular plot line comes from. Um, But in... Mr. Freeze's second episode of the animated series, too. Uh, you guys, I don't know if you, you were talking about, you know, uh, Disney there earlier. Um, if you remember the episode Deep Freeze? Hmm, probably. Yeah, I've not seen that one. It's, uh, it's the second Mr. Freeze episode. It's the first one to introduce the concept of Nora actually been in this <laughs> tube that Mr. Freeze hangs on to. Uh, and he's abducted by this billionaire theme park mogul <laughs> called Grant Walker. Uh, and his whole thing, we mentioned Grant Walker earlier because his whole thing is that he wants Mr. Freeze to make him like him because Mr. Freeze will age slower. And he wants, but Grant Walker wants to live forever, basically. And so he wants, if I become like Mr. Freeze and live in a freeze suit, I'm going to live forever. And uh, so Mr. Freeze agrees to do that and Grant Walker gives him Nora because, like, look, she's alive this whole time. She's just in this tube. And uh, Grant Walker's whole scheme in that is that theme park mogul who has employees called Visioneers. Uh, and they are creating something called Oceana, which is this ideal city that he will control that's like a theme park. And then he's going to use a giant freeze ray to freeze the rest of the city. So then basically everyone will die and then they can kind of rise again from the frozen ashes or whatever. Basically. That sounds like somebody, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's a lot of, basically, it's Walt Disney. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the thing. Uh, I guess they're partially playing on the urban legend that I believe Michael Eisner came out and told people it was true, and it turned out it wasn't, <laughs> that Walt had his head frozen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I've heard lately that that's actually nonsense. But It is. Who do you it trust? Is. <laughs> yeah. I think people, if you look up, people have said, like, it's, no, it's the, the, the cryogenics weren't even a thing when he was alive. Yeah. Like, it would, but then they could have been, maybe he knew about it and no one else did. Well, actually, you know what? I I looked up, uh, let me make sure I haven't got it for a note coming up. Oh, no, I do have it as a note coming up in a later minute. Ignore, cut this bit out. No, but <laughs> I, um, I'll let you know and you can edit it out. I, I looked up and I will talk about the first man to be cryogenically frozen. Ah. James Hiram Bedford. Mm. I see we... Wiener. I see <laughs> Wiener. <laughs> IP freely. Um, yeah. Moon pie. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, he was frozen in. Uh, let me see. Let me get the date. I've written it down. 1967. Oh. Uh, Walt Disney dies 1966. So. Yeah. Yeah. It could, could be, though. The preliminary research might have been there. It's like, oh, no, his head is frozen. Well, actually, you know, know come that. to think of it, it is, it is still possible because, right, he's the first one to successfully be cryogenically frozen. They made some attempts before him that didn't work. Oh. But this guy, it worked, and they still have his body now. Yeah. It's still preserved yeah. now, although the chemicals they used, mm. they think it's like, yeah... There's absolutely no way that this would have, you know, it, it, he's preserved <laughs> like a mummy, but he's not, you know. The, the, yeah. yeah. There's nothing that you could ever bring back, but yeah. Mm. 
But uh, so it's just a longer, slower death they give this guy. Well, no, he died, <laughs> and then they free. Oh no, he's already. Yeah, dead. yeah, okay. you're not. It's illegal to do it while you're alive. Yeah. So they yeah. freeze you within like an hour of you dying or something, and then it's yeah. basically like, oh well, well, when we figure out how to cure what killed you. Yeah, the concept we'll you is back. you're cryogenically frozen, and then someday in the future, when they figure out how to bring people back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When we find the cure for 17 stab wounds. Yeah. <laughs> We're up to 11. <laughs> Nearly there. Keep yeah. on keep on uh, uh, trying people. <sighs> but um but yeah, amongst that as well though, uh Oceana is very blatantly based on Walt Disney's original plan for Epcot. Mm. Mm. What the word Epcot stands for is Experimental Prototype Community yeah. of Tomorrow. And this was going to be a city that he would that, that would be in it was like Disneyland was the afterthought yeah. to what Epcot was supposed to be. Yeah. He was creating a city that he would run where there would be schools, mm -hmm. people would live there mm -hmm. under the Disney banner. And it would just be like, this is going to be instead of the way society is running now. Yeah. We're go like, it's almost as if he will be like, you know, first Epcot, then the world. Like, it's going to, everything's going to be like this eventually. I've never been to Epcot, but I know it's. People say it's pretty boring. I've been to Epcot. I, I liked Epcot because there's it's it's this whole like futurism thing. Yeah. Of like this is yeah. what things are okay. going to be like in the future. And then like years and years later, those attractions become very dated. Mm -hmm. And there's something I like. Like there's something fun about that to me of like, oh, no, that's not I how it turned that... out. Uh, but the thing is, then, yeah, so in the episode, Grant Walker's whole thing is like, yeah, the outside world is filled with like violence and crime and all the the lower classes basically i'm going to eradicate them so my prestigious uh, chosen people can thrive and it's kind of you know it's a, you know coming from a batman and a you know a character classically owned by warner brothers a rival of disney it really seems like they're sticking it to him. <laughs> uh, could all even be tying in too, because that's kind of got, almost got like a eugenics kind of vibe to it. Mm. I don't know if they're trying to allude to Walt's uh, Nazi oh. sympathies and stuff that were apparently, you know, he hosted Lenny Reifenstahl like like a month after Crystal Knocked happened Ooh. and stuff. It's like I'm pretty sure mm. some people would say. Oh, he was just trying to get the movies out in Germany because they were banned and stuff. But I don't know. I that'd don't know. Be, there there sus. are some really questionable Donald Duck cartoons yeah. that only yeah. came out in Germany that, uh, yeah. yeah. They're into the mob, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but again, I wonder if that's what they're, they're having a little bit of like, well, that's what Grant Walker is. He is all the evil of Walt Disney. Mm -hmm. It kind of made me think as well, though. I hated Tim Burton's Dumbo. Yeah. Hated it. But it's also kind of like it's simultaneously mocking Disney while being a Disney movie. I wonder if he had done Mr. Freeze and had seen that episode, if Mr. Freeze would just flat out be a theme park owner <laughs> yeah. who was based on Walt Disney. And he'd be like, yeah, that's what I'm into. That's the only part of this character I care about. <laughs> Although I guess he also had the Dr. Fives thing as well, because that's what Mr. Freeze is based on. Mm. So he might have been like, oh, I could join the two together. That'd be great. <laughs> Love me some uh, Dr. But, Fives. Hell Yeah. But that's um. But yeah, so in that episode, they also have you know giant freeze ray. Mister Freeze turns on Grant Walker eventually. They do a nice thing where he's like, because it's good, it's well written. So Mister Freeze is outwardly very cold and like has no emotion, but then inside him there is a glimmer of hope. Where it turns out like, no, I I will actually help these people, and I'm gonna save Nora, and I'm gonna save the city and stuff to help out Batman. Whereas Grant Walker appears to be very friendly and like he's your best he's your beloved uncle on the surface and inside he's a cold horrible calculating asshole who only cares about himself mm. um and uh yeah he was actually the end of that episode he gets frozen he's you know will live forever but he gets frozen in a, on an iceberg left to sink to the bottom of the sea it's a very chilling ending for him actually but in the comics he did come back uh but again because well, no one ever <laughs> dies in the comics yeah no. Yeah, you can justify um, bringing them back. It doesn't even matter. You don't even have to justify it. Just bring them back. Yeah, it's okay. impossible. Somehow they've character. returned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was just like it was like a one issue. Like a Grant Walker's back. What are you gonna do with him? Oh, he gets revenge on Mister Freeze for like a bit, and then I don't know he just kind of disappears again. <laughs> it's like, well, I kind of would have. I'm intrigued by him as a character, though. I feel you could do a lot more with yeah. that concept of like, you know. Walt, Walt, evil Walt Disney. We already have enough evil billionaires in the DC universe, mm. to be fair. In the like, real universe. Like, as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, very much so. But yeah, I would love to see, particularly in the age of like 
where Disney is literally buying everything. It feels like you could bring Grant Walker back to be like, well, this is a guy who's like literally buying up all your media now. Like everything will soon be Grant Walker <laughs> because that's the way things are. Like Warner Brothers is like the big holdout from Disney. It's like if they go, oh, if God. Disney buys Warner Brothers, and it'll probably happen in our lifetime. It's, what, what are we gonna do? <laughs> like everything will be owned by them by that stage. Yeah, I I think this is officially the most tangents we've ever gone off. On. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is impressive. Well, going get sliding back into this movie. So uh, I I had it paused for a while on this shot of of Freeze laying on the bed of diamonds, looking up, terrified, and oh, I like just, a, like a flipped turtle. Yeah, I just realized that his costume has nipples. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Nip- everyone has nipples in this everyone's movie, gotta have really. nipples <laughs> yeah i think even bad girl's costume has nipples it has the the yeah. suggestion of nipples mm-hmm. yeah they're slightly more muted because of again sexism it's a bit like instagram you know if it's a male presenting nipple it's fine yeah yeah <laughs> we've seen like yeah through the concept art for ivy's outfits massive nipples. Ooh, <laughs> spiked <laughs> spiked nipples she had at one point that'd be cool like, like thorns that. Yeah, and then that was the whole picture. It was like basically she was like a cactus, yeah. like wearing a cactus outfit, mm. but it had this like you know or or, or thorns and uh, yeah. yeah so they, like, they made they her a like succulent too, too much. Yeah, succulent. <laughs> <laughs> she is very succulent. <laughs> <laughs> but um, well, one thing though, Mister Freeze noted that the the little heater thing not on his chest anymore. I guess it just slid off <laughs> like. It kind of makes it feel like, why aren't you getting back up, man? Did it really knacker your back or something when you fell? Is the that the damage happened? is done. The, the heat has uh, screwed him up completely. Mm. Yeah. This guy, I thought they would have made a point of like having it fused to the suit. You could have had it kind of melting in yeah, the suit yeah. as well. It could have been a cool effect, but... No, it seems like they just... It doesn't seem to be lying next to him or anything. Well, it feels like, yeah, he just fell off, ha- probably shattered something in his back. Have, and you now ever, he's like, ah! have you ever had to wear one of those like stick-on heating pads? Like they've got an adhesive on them, and you can like put them. Uh, on oh them. yeah, I have ones that Jack weirdly, sells on TV. They never stay where they're supposed to. <laughs> Actually, weirdly enough, I had to wear one in the last couple of months because of my back. Yeah, <laughs> so, I mean they're so. they're fine for like a little while, but then as you start to perspire and move around, they definitely shift. Yeah, Shaquille yeah. O'Neal has become the spokesperson of that product. Yeah, icy hot <laughs> patch yeah. or something. Okay, amazing, amazing. <laughs> yeah. Steal, steal himself yeah. is now being there. one of the. I few... always laugh. It's like Shaq here. He he's he's been the spokesperson for a lot of things. He owns he owns stock in Papa John's now. Yeah, oh, he was what? the spokesperson yeah. for that like cut rate car insurance company, the General oh, yeah. or something. Oh, yeah. See, he's one of the few basketball players we know. Yeah. Because like he played obviously... a he, he played a genie that one time in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. There was a random period when I was a child where everyone knew Michael Jordan here, even though nobody plays basketball. It's like, well, we know who he is, and then we knew who Shaq was, and then I'm trying to think of any. There might be one more. <laughs> Dennis Rodman. Dennis yeah. Rodman. Yeah. There was, was Dennis Rodman because he was noted for being like, oh yeah, he's a bit of a like a bit of a nut job. Yeah. Well, he basically. he was one of the first kind of I don't know if he identifies this way, but like gender queer kind of people mm-hmm. I experienced because it's like, okay, so he he's a man, but he's like wearing nail polish and dresses and th- and it's like really cool mm. and like oh okay, isn't he buddies with like Kim Jong Un? Yeah, he, yeah. yeah, he's yeah, yeah. That's well, a weird story because Kim Jong Un <laughs> went to. school school in where did he go it was somewhere in europe like switzerland or something um and he really got into basketball so dennis robin thought well i can go over to north korea um you know to to put on like exhibition basketball games and things and that will be like the inroad we can have to uh, communicate with him mm-hmm. so it's not it's not crazy <laughs> <laughs> It could be something like, it feels like there's a movie there, though, of like future dictator goes to school in Switzerland, <laughs> but he has to join the basketball team. Or yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Yeah. 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 I mean, get on it. <laughs> there's a spec script waiting to be written. Why not? You know, we've had young Sheldon. Can't we have young Kim? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, <laughs> Kim John Young. Oh! I guess. oh! <laughs> that tears it. It's done, right? We now get on the phone to all the HBO, Fox, <laughs> yeah, get, all of them. Get me NBC yeah, on the phone. Yeah. 
He wouldn't have any beef with uh, having people betray him in the media in less than uh, stellar light. Uh, <laughs> it can be like one of those things. He's the hero at the start, and he becomes the villain in the final episode. Because yeah, yeah. because the movie The Dictator was so popular, you know. <laughs> well, what was that? What was that movie with um with Seth Rogen where they went to The Dictator? That's, that's... that one. Oh is no, that, no, is that The it's... Dictator? No, that's. No, the the interview, the, interview. Interview. Yeah. the dictator is something. The, the dictator is a uh, that's 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 uh, a that? Sasha Baron Cohen. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I thought yeah. you. I thought the same as you when you said the dictator. I knew the movie. You meant yeah. I wasn't thinking of Sasha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh but, even um, more for you to cut out now. Um, yeah, we are getting <laughs> far away. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. I mean. Well, well, what happens here? So we've got the satellites get realigned, uh, and now Batman has a giant heat ray that he can use to blast Gotham. That the scientists um, are still dangling from. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, and he casually just tells them to hang on. <laughs> no emotion or anything. Cool as a cool as a cucumber. I like that he does. Every actor who's ever played Batman has a Batman voice, and mm-hmm. George Clooney yeah. just is like, yeah, George hang Clooney, on. George Clooney <laughs> yeah. just doesn't care. He doesn't put on any kind of a character, or no. Nope. Yeah, as you say, he's just like, hang on, hang on. <laughs> the thing is, because of uh, because most of the movie was it was ADR'd, uh, <laughs> most of his stuff was uh, taken down two decibels in post oh. when he was in the bat suit to, to give him any decibel, <laughs> and you you wouldn't even notice it. Yeah, <laughs> we gotta give him something. <laughs> but then you go too far, of course, with your yeah, yeah. 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 Christian Bale really. really. <laughs> you you sound like a. Big old dog. Yeah. <laughs> There's Little a middle ground. Found. We'll clear that right up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I kind of wish, though, one of these doctors turned out, you saw a name tag and it was like Dr. Linz. Oh. And it turned out this was like the low key origin of Firefly. Yeah. <laughs> where like they end up getting horrifically burned and they're like, I remember that time I was trapped on a telescope and I really wish I could fly and I hate ice so much. <laughs> this... So he's now like, I'm just going to have a, a flamethrower and I'm going to fly around you, all you the time. You think in Marvel style. That's the thing. Yeah, th- this may yeah. not be a fair question, but who has more ridiculous science? Is it, go- is it the DC universe or the Marvel universe? Oh, I, I got to oh. lay in a lot on. Oscorp, because it yeah. seems like what eighty percent of all Spider-Man villains are all the fault of Oscorp. It's like, man, maybe the FDA should come in, or not the FDA, <laughs> but like the, someone yeah. should come in and step in and be like, Norman. Oh, to be fair, I'm sure they do in many, many comics. But the World Health stuff, Organization Norman. comes in and they're like, Norman, you have to stop. Yeah, yeah, it's like Norman, seriously, you're out. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I, I would put because I think like in the Amazing Spider-Man too, they almost have admit to the fact that like yeah, all these the entirety of the Sinister Six would yeah. just be Oscorp experimentation. Yeah. Um, but um, as the sunlight begins to work, you know, here and the ice is thawing, only eight and three quarter hours to go. Um, the ice but... <laughs> got a break. <laughs> it is. Uh, Bat Batman sort of gloats, doesn't he? You've lost, Freeze. Mm-hmm. But then I love. I think not. And he hits a button on his gauntlet. <gasps> As the minute ends! What yeah. could it be? I think he's going to blow the place sky high, just like the Predator did to him. Yeah. Mm. He'd just be like, you ugly. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That would Why be good, not? actually. Just, it was like, you know what? Because later on in the movie, he does do an allusion to Predator that we'll yeah. talk about in like two weeks' time. Go, go, go for it. Why not? <laughs> just... The start going, oh, by the way, I'm Detective John Kimball. <laughs> <laughs> Put that cookie down. <laughs> oh, yes. It's in my it. house eating my birthday cake. <laughs> <laughs> like, who is your daddy and what does he do? <laughs> right, it's I've... not a tumor. <laughs> All right. I, I, we need to talk about that movie now. That's going to be a bonus episode. Come on. Oh yeah, sure. Well, then we got a whole hiatus after this. We can do any Arnie. That's the thing. Now it's just like it's like having a giant cake. It's like <laughs> you get to do any Arnie movie you want. <laughs> when are you going to start? <laughs> I would say let's do an Arnie fest, but that's kind of been done. Yeah, I don't really want to do Last Action Hero, but actually speaking to Dave Palace, I think he's he's rolling around, maybe doing it minute by minute. So oh, I don't want to well. step in his toes if he's actually going to go and do the project, you know. But he's also. <laughs> Between that and Die Hard with a Vengeance, which I really hope he does do, because I would love to talk about Die Hard with a Vengeance. That's my favorite Die Hard. <laughs> yeah, but it's I, um, it's up there for me. I, one and three are both perfect. 
<laughs> there's days I have been like, I think three might be better. I think it actually, yeah. I might prefer it as a movie, but possibly. Uh, I, I I do a lot of the a lot of interviews for work, and one of the interview questions we do is the 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 water jugs riddle at the end of uh, Die Hard with a Vengeance. <laughs> Just to kind of like, it's like a critical thinking challenge. It's like if they've seen Die Hard with a Vengeance, like that's that pollutes the pool, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> I was imagine though, you just get these guys that's roaring at each other like they did in the movie. <laughs> I mean, that's more creative than asking, tell me a fun fact about yourself. I yeah. hate that. Or, or how many windows are in New York City? It'd <sighs> yeah. be terrible though if you were just like having to be like, do one of the other riddles. It's like, okay, so. As I was going to St. Ives, I met a man. Was it? Sorry, sorry. I'll go back to start. But as I was going to, was like, like it's a diehard riddle. I get it. Come on. Yeah. But you've got to do it the same rhythm and speed that he delivers it because it's very unique. Yeah. Oh, I was going to try to do it, then. I stumbled at the first friggin' It's hard, syllable. isn't it? Yeah. It's a sex and wise. Why were they going to St. Ives? <laughs> My phone number is five 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 one. It's very <laughs> fast. Mm, you'd, if that's... you were actually trying to solve it, you'd be like, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait hang on. <laughs> <laughs> What's the thing? There? It's the seven sacks. Like, oh, damn it, McLean, that's not it. <laughs> the future Alfred uh, Jeremy Irons right there as well. So uh, He's a pro. Everything's connected. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, but only, anyway. <laughs> the only difference here, it's not even exciting, uh, with the draft, is that it is only now that they come up with the plan to thaw the city, and they figure it all out in two seconds flat. Mm. They just yeah. go, right, let's throw the city. Right, okay, let's do this. Bam, bam, bam. And they, they do it in like three lines. Um, that's the only difference. Nothing else changed. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm, I'm ready to mosey on to minute 111. Niall, you're still stuck in Silverado mode saying that. <laughs> mosey on there. <laughs> <laughs> so we will. We'll mosey out of here, people. And we'll be back on Friday with more exciting Bat Minute action. See you then. Bat Bye. 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 Next time, down Periscope. A toppled tempestuous antagonist triggers a winter of discontent while a titanic-sized telescope totally tumbles into the scent. Could our favorite crime fighter be finally felled by his frigid foe? And what might save him from being golfied on the rocks below? We're in a tight spot on Friday, Bat fans. Same Bat Pod, different Bat Minute. Kawabanga! We'll be be back. back.